Before 20,000 years ago, we had to be in very close contact to hunt that mammoth. That's why we find so many broken bones. Well, we are in the early Mesolithic here. People are fishing. So paleo diet people, sorry. Uh, probably not. I think so. <laughs> <laughs>Sarah Lacey and I'm an archaeology professor. My name is Rachel Hill and I'm a history professor. So today we're watching Far Cry Primal. What do you feel about the Paleolithic? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I am hoping for some saber-toothed tigers. I get real fuzzy past the medieval period so this will be all you. <laughs> well this is my specialty, the upper Paleolithic. It's just as Europe is coming out of the last ice age. Things are starting to look up but we're still hunter-gatherers. Fires. That's a real skill, I gotta say. That's a hard one. I mean, once you get used to it, I'm sure. <laughs> Paleolithic people have no problem, but I have problems. He did that pretty quickly. Is that rocks that he just found on the ground? Because I would imagine if like, he brought fire starting, yeah, nice pieces of flint. You wouldn't just throw that away. You'd put that back in your pocket or something. Yeah, exactly. Humans have quite a long history with fire, right? There's evidence of fire at like 1.4 million years, but controlled use of fire starts around 800,000 years ago. I hope fires. this is a controlled burn. I really took off. Yeah, like as if there was some kind of accelerant. accelerant. <laughs> so we know that they're using fire for hars, so to keep warm, for cooking. Now controlled burns of the landscape for terraforming, we do have evidence of that in the Upper Paleolithic. And that may actually be why we have fewer forests in Europe than we would expect. Oh, it's the saber-toothed tiger. But we're in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> But it looks real cool. No, yeah, no saber-toothed cats at 10,000 years ago in Europe. So saber-tooths are, we associate with North America. They're not a, a European species. We do have big cats in Europe, cave lions, but not saber-toothed cats. But those aren't as cool looking. That's exactly. Ooh, mammoths. Oh, he's hunting, huh? Well, if you have projectile weapons, you don't have to get that close to the mammoth. Before 20,000 years ago, we didn't have projectile weapons, so you had to be in very close contact to hunt that mammoth. That's why we find so many broken bones. I'd imagine you'd want a crew with you if you're hunting a mammoth too, is that right? Oh yeah, no one's hunting mammoth by, by themselves, themselves. <laughs> no. And this kind of sign language, right, or ways to silently communicate to not alert prey, I'm sure that's something that they were utilizing, though we would never find that in the archeological record. And I guess you can't tell if they really sported these dreadlocks with beads on them. Well, we do know they have like pendants, but I don't know about dreadlocks, but it looks cool. It does. Well, this is awesome that in gameplay you get to hunt mammoth. I mean, how dangerous would it be to get that close to a mammoth? Oh my gosh, so dangerous. <laughs> Just end you with one tusk. There's a reason why these people have injuries that make them look like rodeo clowns. Oh, they're trying to separate the small mammoth from the herd, pick off the younger one. Well, if they're anything like elephants today, right, they'll close ranks and Around try to protect young, each other. Yeah. You can eat for two months off a mammoth. We did, he just said, we kill mammoths to eat or we die, so. I mean, there are other things to eat in the <laughs> landscape, I imagine, but as long as you have either it's cold enough to freeze it or you've got some sort of creative way to dry, ferment. Mm, fermented mammoth. There was a conference in 1906, I think, where they served recently defrosted mammoth to all the participants and everyone got very bad food poisoning. <laughs> so don't try that at home. <laughs> we got some spears into them. Oh, we got a small one, I feel bad. I know, who are we supposed to be rooting for here? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> are we on the side of the mammoth? Oh, it's just a baby. He's got some pretty big tusks for a baby. Yeah, how soon did they grow tusks? I feel like that's in adulthood, but I am not a mammoth biologist. Oh, you're on your last spear. Would they have thrown the spear like that? Yeah, probably. Yeah. And they have the shoulders of baseball pitchers. Now, were there all males in that hunting group or was that a mixed sex hunting group? Because it should be mixed sex. Yeah, that looked pretty male dominated. So this whole idea of like the male caveman bonking the woman over the head with a stick and dragging her by her hair back into the cave is totally inaccurate. We see that males and females have all the same hunting injuries on them. There's no evidence of sexual division of labor. 
Oh, is he fishing? Yeah, it looks like spearing fish. Oh, well, we are in the early Mesolithic here. People are fishing. Fishing, though, is actually a relatively recent behavior in Europe, only about 14,000 years ago. So paleo diet people, sorry. They are actually gathering wild wheat around 30,000 years ago. We have grinding stones. So certainly they're utilizing all the sorts of foods in their environment, not just meat. Even though, right, bones preserve in the fossil record, we find those and we think, oh, that's all they're eating. But now that we're able to get more information from their teeth, we recognize that they're actually eating quite a bit of plants. This doesn't seem like this would be in Europe. <laughs> that looks like a crocodile. Yeah, there's no crocodiles in the Carpathian Mountains, but it looks fun. He has to skin it underwater? That's a skill. Skilled swimmer? I mean, I would imagine. I don't know how we're supposed to get evidence of that. More crocodiles. That didn't exist. At least as far as we know. Oh, is he, he's, oh, he's stringing his bow. Yeah, bows start showing up in Europe around 20,000 years ago. So this seems accurate that he would have access to bow and arrow technology, but they're a lot more recent than most people realize. Ooh, he's gonna make an ax. Usually that would be held in there with some sort of mastic. You need to add a glue. So they actually had access to glues. We call them mastics. They make them from tree sap and you have to keep it a super controlled temperature, have it heated for hours on end and let it sweat out this sap to produce a glue, but they're able to figure it out. Oh, a double arrow. Sure. Double the fun. Yeah, you don't use those willy nilly though. You wanna go back and gather those after they've been shot. I'm not sure they had any projectile axes, but sure. Ooh, she got a gnarly wound. I mean, we do have some evidence of antibiotic usage. Let's see the Iceman, who's about 5,300 years old, was found with some antibiotic fungus, not fungus, moss. And Neanderthals were eating chamomile. I don't know how, it helps you sleep? <laughs> well, that's the only medicine I'm aware of. That has to have been a hunting wound? Yeah. Well, if you could get something that was antibacterial and something that was a painkiller in it, that would make that a little less miserable. So we don't have any evidence of splints in this time period, but we do have evidence of amputations. Number of individuals that are missing arms, for instance. You can't survive with one leg because you can't keep up with everybody, but you could survive with one arm. Are we gonna domesticate this wolf? Certainly by this period in the upper Paleolithic, you had dog domestication. About 15,000 years ago, we can see that the skeletons of the dogs look different than wolves, but they've probably been domesticated for longer than that. We just can't tell the skeleton of a domesticated dog apart from a wolf. Oh, is that a little African spotted wild dog? <laughs> They're adorable. They are. Oh, you got lots of options in Canine Friends. Oh, oh uh, probably I not. Think so. <laughs> <laughs> Not domesticating big cats. No. no. That would bite your hand right off. I mean, they love to show cave lions and cave paintings. They certainly saw them and had some sort of emotional connection or religious connection with them. No. Not no, on the bear. No bears. <laughs> no pet bears. Bears don't make good pets. Cave bears are 12 feet tall. They're huge, but they're vegetarians. So dogs are probably the first animal that we domesticated. We've been co-evolving with dogs for perhaps 30,000 years. Cats are a more recent thing. We probably started domesticating them once we started doing agriculture. Which is why cats are kind of jerks. <laughs> <laughs> they know that we didn't really need them first. <laughs> Certainly they're wearing lots of clothes made out of leather. We have no textiles in this time period. Yeah. I don't know if they're wearing antlers on their head, but like, why not? Would that indicate status? Yeah, potentially. Sir, we see making beads out of animal bones. And then when you're buried, the clothes decompose, but the beads stay and they're in the place. So we know that they had like a crazy hat or boots or something like that because the rows of beads are there. All right, is this the gathering part of the... <laughs> Just getting some nice wood here. Cattails are edible. It's hard for us to know exactly what they ate plant-wise because it doesn't preserve. Right. But we can actually, in the, the plaque left on their teeth, see evidence of the crystals that exist inside the cell walls of plants and figure out some of the things they ate. Fungus? 
I, don't I know mean, what that certainly was. they were eating those, but it takes a long time to learn which ones. I are. was gonna say <laughs> trial and error. Uh huh. As far as like built structures go, we do have some evidence of built structures at this time period. There's even a hut that was found in the Ukraine that's built out of a bunch of mammoth jaw bones interlocked together. That's dope. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time you're just sleeping in caves, you might as well utilize the stuff that naturally exists on the landscape. And the Carpathian Mountains are full of caves. Mm. And if but you're yeah. moving around seasonally, I imagine you if you do have a structure, you'd want it something that, you know, you could put up very easily. And Yeah, like they're showing here with like a wood frame and just animal skins draped over it, not building anything out of stone. Again, that doesn't come to agriculture when you have a reason to stay in one place. I mean, we've got a real village here. Yeah. But it, that seems like it's more sedentary. Maybe where this is the, maybe they're coming in contact with some agriculturalists. All right, well, we got the saber-toothed tigers and the mammoths. I definitely enjoyed seeing what I specialize in being showcased in a video game. I can talk about it, but I'm not actually sure I would survive in this time period. I know a lot about fire, but not about actually making fire. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, follow Gameology on Facebook and YouTube. Um, this is my COVID hair. I just, because you can't get haircuts anymore, I decided to screw it. <laughs> COVID eyebrows. <laughs> I'm going for the Eugene Levy look. <laughs> it's full unibrow.